Hey everyone, Jim T. Graham with RC Groups, and today we're looking at an awesome airplane. This is the Radiant XL from Horizon. I saw it at Joe Nall flying, and I stopped David Payne, and I was like, oh my gosh, man. It's It looks great, but it's huge. It's eight and a half foot wingspan. is gigantic. Here it is with Wind Junkie, who helped me fly this bird last week at my show. And it, it's all pre-built, so here's the fuse. Everything you see there is there when you buy the plane. The receiver, AS3X, is already programmed. The motor, the prop, everything's there. It's 15 minutes to build this thing, for real. I uh, believe there is carbon uh, fiber in that fuse. The tail group, easy to put together, easy to take off if you feel the need to. Wingtips slide off. It's only a two-screw process. I leave the one screw on and take the other two off. And there it is. It does not fit in my Ford Excursion, the biggest truck on the road, but you can take the wing off, take the wing tips off. Bind and Fly is hanging there, ready for you to plug in and bind it to your transmitter. It's just that easy and so fast. 3 cell 3200 LiPo, it can take 2200s, probably can take larger than that as well. Just get that CG right and you're good to go. So I took the Radiant XL to my event here in Nashville, and I had a good friend, Wind Junkie, who's a great sailplane pilot, and he flew it, and we had a discussion about it here. Hey everybody, Jim T. Graham with rcgroups.com. Today we're flying the Radiant XL. This is the big brother to the Radiant that we all know and love, and uh, the interesting thing is this thing is eight and a half feet. We're here with Wind Junkie, who's flying the plane. We're flying the Maiden right now. And um, I just wanted to get some inputs and thoughts and find out what he thought about different things. So let's start out with, it's, a, it's not your standard cell plane because it's a giant foam cell plane. So uh, how did you, let's start out with how you thought it might fly. Well, knowing the Radian, the Radian tends to not do very well in uh, high winds. I'm talking winds over 10 miles an hour. It'll, it's great for signal and light lift, but if you try to penetrate in that wind, you end up just killing the battery. You'll, you won't be able to make it back home, so to speak. But this one, I mean, we uh, came down for that photo pass with uh, 45 degrees on the spoilers. I pretty much just did one long sinking turn, and then the wind picked up very suddenly. I turned off the motor. I did one turn, and I noticed I was going up, so I followed downwind few more turns and next thing I know I'm 100 feet higher so it it's got legs to it it really uh, for such a big floaty uh, signal lift signaling plane you can see the wingtips doing everything as it goes through different little turbulences caused by you know the various uh, lifting air pockets um, it, it really does move and have some uh, penetration capability which was surprising for an eight and a half span foot foamy so this thing, uh, I'm not kidding you, I put it together in 15 minutes, call it 20 if you want to be meticulous, I'm not sure what you'd be meticulous about, and um, it comes apart just as easily. You can pull the wing off the fuse or you can pull the tips off the wing uh, any way that you want to do it. I'm hoping that the wing and the fuse will just fit in the truck that way. Also, P.S., I'll take a photo of this, I use the shipping foam as a uh, carry container for the plane. So everything lives in there, the screws, my screwdriver, all the wing tips and all that. So that's something else to be aware of. So let's talk about power. I know the Radiant sometimes is not the most powerful plane in the air. And how did you feel about the power system on this uh, Radiant XL? Uh, this definitely, it was bigger. It doesn't have a, a lot of vertical capability, but if you, if you know you're coming down, it definitely has enough to get you out of trouble. Ah. If you're... Uh, if you got some turbulence and you might want a little speed going through something, it's perfect for that. It's not the kind of plane where you just point it at a spot, you know, 500 feet in the air and it'll go there. This is this is more of a um, kind of a security blanket that you can you can count on to get you home if uh, if you guessed wrong and the lift is not where you thought it would be. And while we're talking about that, and we'll cut to a photo, let's talk about the spoilers and how you felt that they were because you seem surprised at the spoilers that came with. And by the way, the radio was set up when I uh, bound it with my DX9, everything was ready to go. And even on the switch where the spoilers were. Yeah, um, the spoilers, uh, when I came down in that 45 degree uh, descent, that turn, that gradual turn, um, 
it didn't really gain much speed, which is what you want out of spoilers. And most importantly, it didn't have any pitch coupling ah. because they're blade spoilers. They're not actuated at the trailing edge. They actually come up where the spar would be at the thickest point of the wing on top. So that really kills your, your, uh, your forward speed. And uh, another great thing about these blade spoilers is you can get rid of them with a flick of the switch and your trim again doesn't change, which if you had an articulated trailing edge spoiler, uh, usually that will cause a picture, pitch correction that needs to be mixed out with an elevator input. Gotcha. And, and it, you initially were saying, should we uh, put some mixes in here? And I said, let's fly it stock the way they intended us to. And, and are you happy with it that way? Would you change any way how you're mixing it? No, I wouldn't. But at, having flown some full, what I call full house sailplanes that actually have ailerons and, and uh, other uh, you know full flaps, so you've got like a six servo wing tail combination, I'm kind of used to uh, using my left thumb to actuate the rudder. So when I'm flying a thermal, I'll find my left thumb moving and it's not doing anything. So I, during the, the uh, short flight that we had, uh, I had to remind my right thumb to do all the double duty there. So I would put a, a mix that slave the, the, the rudder, left, right. yeah, the rudder to the uh, aileron, which is really the rudder on the right stick. And so basically what we're saying is out of the box, uh, the rudder is on the aileron stick. They just put it all in one place, which in the slow fly days, that's how I did it too. But I also am a rudder. I'm always working the rudder when I fly, and uh, I will be in the air and think nothing's happening. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you want you want the right stick to work also. It's just when you move your left stick, you don't want to have your brain try to think, oh, I forgot everything's on the right stick, and then it'll all come together in the mix. And with that said, this thing is so big and uh, docile up in the air. Um, like at one point, I'm used to little DLG planes, and so at one point I couldn't tell if I was turning or... Uh, but there's nothing to be upset about. I mean, it's moving so slow, you could uh, you could do a math quiz and and then get back to the problem later. Yeah, you've got a lot of time to think through any thermal turn, and, and uh, you know, if you've got obstacles ahead, you can very, uh, you, you get a lot of time to avoid them. It's um, it's responsive for how big it is. That, that was surprising, and I'm surprised how much uh, uh, power it does have, how much legs, you, you say a sailplane has legs, if it can go out and, and find things that are near the horizon, no matter what the wind condition is. So let's, before we get out of here, talk about uh, trimming it. We just leveled everything, made it straight, threw it up. We never hit a trim tab, and uh, it flew great. And you were telling me about how you trim a sailplane like this. Once again, I'm kind of DLG-based, and I guess the concept on a plane like this is you power up to the height you want to get, throw your uh, throttle stick to zero, and then hunt around for uh, your thermals. But uh, and how, do you, how do you set up? trim on a plane like this yeah the way I like to do it is um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do it yourself I'll, I'll get some altitude and then I'll come down pretty low and I'll let the speed bleed off and then what I consider like a cruising speed I'll make sure that it, it glides straight and level of course it is coming down a little bit but sailplanes have a very long uh, glide ratio so it, you don't want to have the plane pitching up or down when you're trying to look for thermals you, you want it's okay to have it pitch up when you power up that's pretty common for, uh, for a high wing sailplane like this, powered sailplane. Um, but yeah, you want I like to have the uh, level flight be at moderate speed. It's very hard to get a powered sailplane to pitch level through all power ranges. So it's kind of a matter of taste for some people, but that's what I like to do. I, I'll have to pick what I call my cruising speed and then set my elevator so that gives right me there. a flat glide. Gotcha. All right, everyone, that's the review of the Radiant XL. We both really like it. It's a big sweetheart, and it's easy to put together and easy to put in your car, and it's got power and everything else you need. I'm Jim T. Graham with rcgroups.com. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.